Can you hear me, Afa? Is it clear? Yes, very clear. We can Good. hear you and we can see you as well. Excellent. Yeah, seeing me is never an issue, but then hearing me, how many people? Where can my voice reach? That's a different question. Yeah, with online, probably it should reach even to Alaska. Let's see what happens anyway after today. So, <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, the, I mean, look, the introduction was amazing. Honestly, I mean, uh, that is one huge marketing for Ali Al Isa. I don't know whether I deserve that, but then it came from Mofa, so definitely very valid and reliable. A lot of trustworthiness is there. So, uh, Wafa is no joke. I mean, you can't mess with Wafa, such an important researcher and a scholar, uh, and, and we, we love her and we respect her so much. Thank you, uh, thank you so much, Wafa, and thanks a lot also to your uh, organizing team. You guys are amazing. Honestly, I'm not going formal. I am going very informal. You guys are incredible. I mean, look at this effort. The transformation taking everything to the next level. Um, I'm saying it and I'm sure so many people said, said it before me and there will be a lot of people who will say the same or even probably more after that. So way to go lady. Bravo. Bravo. Excellent stuff. Really very proud of you. Okay, um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, assalamu alaykum ajma'een. Probably I should say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, even probably good night. I don't know if some people are in bed and watching Ali al Isa. That would be a very interesting bedtime story for them probably. Uh, so uh, this, this time zone, the difference is incredible now and uh, Let's see whether that talk will, will keep you awake or what will happen exactly. I don't know, but uh, hopefully the word ideology should, should do something here. Yeah, so let's share and see. Okay. Is this okay, Wafa? Can you see that? Yes, we can see that. Thank you. Great. Superb. Okay. All right, guys, this is basically the, the title, which uh, Wafa um, quoted earlier, preparing professional teachers for an ideologically conflicting ELT. Yes, ELT full of conflicts, uh, ideologically driven. Nobody can deny that. Those who are very much into critical applied linguistics can absolutely see this and, and probably see it very clearly. But then professionalism, that's a different story. That's a huge story. Let's see how we can really clarify it today together, yeah? Okay, all right. What does ideology mean? A very important question. Many people are unaware of it. Many people hear the word, but then um, what it means remains sometimes a big question to so many people. Let's see what it means. Probably there's more than one meaning here. Let's see. Okay, a simple definition, the way individuals view the world. It's that simple. How people see the world. And this clearly now should tell you that we all have our own ideologies. Ideologies are also a form of, of biases. So we all have that. Nothing special about this. But then we have another definition. And it's a complex one. And it's a group of beliefs and systems that lead to a certain behavior. Now, this probably should tell you something that about ideologies, that they can be beliefs at the very beginning, but they can be complex at the same time. And they can also go to the next level. They can become practices. And that's the big thing. When an ideology turns into a practice, goodness gracious, that becomes a very different story. It can be good or it can be bad, positive or negative. Let's see how the whole thing here 
today's story, how the whole story unfolds for us. And at the end of the day, you will be able to tell me whether that was a good story or a bad one. A positive one or a negative one. I leave this to you. Uh, an example, for example, here, ELT in Oman, political, economic, and cultural implications, ideologies, ideologies of the government, ideologies of the people behind planning and theorizing and even implementing ELT in Oman. Good or bad? Too early to judge. Let's leave it till later. Let's keep you a little bit thrilled here if we can. Another example, the practices used in ELT in Oman. Five plus decades now, and look at that, have been pretty rigid, pretty centralized. It's all about the mandated textbook, teacher centeredness, and this gap, this gulf between theory and practice, Everything is about assessment. Everything is about grades and marks, regardless of what you learn. It's quantity at the expense of quality. It's all about memorization. And this has been really painful for us Omanis because it has actually failed our plans, failed our aspirations, our programs, our students, our teachers, even our expectations. It hasn't been the best of experiences, unfortunately. So, what's the solution then? We've got to do something. Five plus decades, you just cannot stand and enjoy watching. You're not going to enjoy, obviously. Being an Omani, it's, it's pretty painful. Well, many people are probably unaware of, of this powerful agency. Really dangerous. Key agency plays a titanic role here in shaping everything to the good or to the bad. Well, to be more specific, we're talking here about the professors, the teacher trainers, basically, and the critical perspective over proceedings they have over their student teachers. And read, look, we call them think tank, and that is no joke. They are the think tank of the business. It's how they really shape the thinking and the behavior of their student teachers, whether they put them on the right track or off track. They control things. They have total power over proceedings. But how? Many people will ask this question, definitely. This is one way of doing it. Critical reflective journals. I've put critical here. It's not just reflective journals. That's not enough. Anybody can write a reflective journal. Probably it's a piece of cake. You sit and you remember and then you write. And that's probably the lowest tier of, of being reflective. But then the top tier would be to be critical. And there's always a hidden agenda here and an expressive aim, more than one aim for a teacher trainer to get your student teachers down that road, working on criticality. That is a massive ask. It's really big. Can you do that? Can you do it successfully? Can you do it as per the specifications in the literature? Not easy. What a challenge. Okay. Now, critical reflective journals definitely help teachers to practice their theories and theorize their practices. It's both, going both sides in both directions, basically. Many people have always thought that, okay, we have a theory, then we practice it. No, teachers are intellectuals, ladies and gentlemen. Teachers are professionals. And those intellectuals, 
they are also in a strong position to theorize, not just to practice. And that's one of the assets professional intellectual practitioners have, which probably not many people have. CRJs also help teachers to see ELT from different political, economic, cultural, educational, and academic perspectives. Look at how complex it can be and how complicated it can be as well. This is what CRJs can offer you. Probably not many tools used in teacher education today can offer the same. Uh, CRJs also help teachers make crucial decisions. Absolutely. Are they really up to it? Can they take the responsibility to make those decisions and bravely enough be responsible for them? Well, that is something for the teacher trainer to test through assigning CRJs. CRJs are so powerful to the extent that they can help teachers challenge and resist. Look, the status quo in Oman very much like probably in so many other developing countries, the Arab world more specifically, even more specifically the GCC countries, highly frustrating, highly disappointing. That's the status quo, the least to be said. And teachers with CRJs, no doubt, can absolutely resist that, challenge it, and see beyond it. There we go. That's a conclusion then. CRJs can definitely prepare professional teachers who can actually introduce change. It's an ideology. Professionalism, ladies and gentlemen, is an ideology in ELT, more specifically in, in CALCS, in Critical Applied Linguistics. It's an ideology. It drives us. It moves us. It makes us change agents, efficient ones. It makes us actually resist and bash the cultural ideology which is really harmful, dangerous, and has been causing so much damage to our system so far. And it is mainly held by high profile stakeholders and they are trying to instill it, unfortunately. This is what research has shown clearly in teachers and students and those who are below them in the rank. So, what are the characteristics of the professional ideology? Probably you're asking now. Endless learning. You need to be an avid learner. Just keep learning. And that's an, a fundamental part of your continuous professional development. Not any type of learning, probably. We're going for innovation and creativity. How much of those creative juices do you have? That's not easy. Definitely need that. That is the top tier of learning. Yes, and you've got to be an active learner, a dynamic one, interactive one. Things change. Theories keep evolving. Practices keep evolving. Thinking keeps evolving. Even creativity and innovation, they, they don't have one definition. Paradigms, this is what we talk about all the time. When you talk about social sciences and humanities, you are talking about paradigms. Multiple. Transformative learning. How can you transform learning and how can learners transform their own learning? See how these two can interact. What change their interaction can introduce to the LT arena. 
democratic learning. How many of us in the Arab world talk about democratic ELT? I bet awfully few. Many of us don't want to go down that road, but it's high time. Ladies and gentlemen, remember one thing that critical, that applied linguistics took a critical turn in the very early 1990s. We're talking now about over two decades. And we cannot sit back and talk about just applied linguistics, just ELT, just TESOL. We need that word critical before all those to make things happen. That's why we are still lagging behind miles by a stretch of a mile. Another important crit critical dimension, equality and social justice. How do you want to look at yourself? How do you want to look at your students? How do you want to look at ELT and applied linguistics? That's your call. You want to stay in your comfort zone? Your call. You want to go and invade the arena of professionalism? Then five and six are a must. Where did this ideology come from? The professional ideology, which is absolutely counter to the culturalist one. Let's see. It came from Ali Al Isa working with four of his top notch ELT stars. I would love to call them like that. But then, how did Ali Al Isa develop that? That's my background. An academic, an ELT activist? Yeah. A critical applied linguist? Definitely. Epistemic rebel? No doubt about that. Enough is enough with the situation in Oman? Yeah. You've got to admit to this. Enough is enough. We're not getting anywhere. Economically, politically, culturally, socially, psychologically, academically, and educationally, we have been in square one for the past 51 years. Probably we need now to step into a different zone. This is what my research informed ever since. A language policy and planner looking at applied linguistics from a very critical perspective, ideological basically, trying to read the minds of the decision makers. Teaching experience, yes, you name it, I've tried it, ladies and gentlemen. 38 years of experiencing everything in Oman ELT. And that gave me, that, that broadened actually my horizons. And now I can see things probably clearer than many other people can. Because I'm combining all that together, curriculum instruction and research and putting everything in a melting pot with a little bit of pinch probably of criticality. So who are our counter ideology characters? As I said earlier, four student teachers, ELT stars, absolutely no doubt about that. I love to call them like this. My junior police, how proud am I of them? Oh so much more than you can imagine. Let's look at how these people started to introduce change. Not any change, informed change. Change that is absolutely inspired by research, inspired by moral values. This is what Sakina is saying. This is fascinating. 
When you look at the fourth line from the bottom, look at those two words between inverted commas. Researcher students, wow. She is looking at her students as researchers. How many of us are doing this for God's sake? Look at this level of professionalism. Fascinating. Raising students' curiosity. Wow. She's already developing that awareness about ELT in Oman. Where it's coming from, where it's heading, and what her role is in changing the status quo. More of Sakina. Highly critical of writing here. She's not happy. She can see it's not writing, it's copying. It's manipulating students' minds. Selling awful goods to them. Telling them that you are developing as writers, which is not true. It's a manipulative act. Controlling the minds of the students and the teachers. And then the teachers take all the blame for doing a bad job. But not with Sakina. There you go. She's playing on their psychology now. Passion. She's making them love her. Because she cares. She loves them, and that's what she's doing precisely. She, she's already developed her philosophy of ELT, and now she's testing it. And we talk about teachers as theorizers, and Sakina's already on that road. This is what Rabab is telling us. Again playing on sociology and psychology. She cares about their future. She wants the best for them. She knows the textbook is not going to give them everything they deserve. They deserve more than that. And look at that. I'm happy to admit that some of them have actually started to change. Oh, wow. She's already achieving something, that woman. Here we go. Look at that reflection she's doing. It's now reflecting on her students. We're talking about meta-reflection probably here. She wants to do self-assessment. She wants them to take charge of their own thinking, independent. Autonomous learners, how many of us are doing this, for God's sake? Rabab is doing it. And look at what she's employing here. Action research. Not any action research. Stemming from reflection, critical reflection. More from Rabab. Rabab is living some dreadful times with her cooperative teacher, pushing her to do what the system is imposing, dictating on all teachers across the board. But then, she's not stupid. Rabab is very aware. All critical applied linguistics practitioners have got awareness. Rabab is no exception. Look at the very last sentence. She's also aware of the supremacy of the textbook, but she is resisting it and challenging it. More from Rabab. Fascinating statement in the second line. Classrooms are about realities. She's a needs analyst. She's not any teacher. She's not just a practitioner who takes the textbook, walks into the classroom, and then teaches it. No. 
She's looking beyond that. And she doesn't want to teach the same lesson twice. She's never happy with this. She's looking for uniqueness, for creativity, for innovation every time. And we've got something from Ramla here. There you go. Look how far that woman has gone. Critical of her teacher education agency. Fascinating, isn't it? That awareness, those CRJs, they have taken her way beyond what any teacher trainer would expect. No, would really dream about. How many teacher trainers allow their student teachers to do this? Are we brave enough? Are we daring enough? Are we seeking reform to do this? My goodness, look at that word in the third line, in the middle. That word actually sits at the heart of Cox. Slavery. It opposes the principles of Cox. And she doesn't want to embrace that. She's too courageous to embrace such a thing. There we go. Making decisions. She doesn't want to replicate others. She wants to have her own identity. She's aware that teachers and I'm on basically don't have an identity. When you have an identity, then you know what is required of you. Not teachers in Oman, unfortunately, in general. Well, there are a few. I'm not going to generalize, but then in general, it's missing. Teachers are followers rather than leaders. And these days, that's not good at all. There we go. Actions speak louder than words. She wants to wow everybody, to tell them that, hey, I'm just a student teacher. I'm too small, too young, but I have what it takes. And I will introduce that change. I'm already working on it. Look at that challenge. Activism. She is already becoming an epistemic rebel. She's challenging the Minister of Education now. How much do these people know? They theorize, but I theorize and practice. A journey. You keep learning. And that's a disaster with some of us. We become teachers. We think it's the end of the world. We earn our PhDs. We think we are the most knowledgeable people on the planet. What a fallacy. What a misconception. This is not working with Ramla. She knows she still has a lot to offer. But then also she knows that there's a lot to learn. It's a journey. Learning is never ending. What does Amna have to tell us here? She's resisting teacher centeredness. She's critical of the traditional approaches. She wants students to develop as autonomous learners. Again, confusion. Conflicting ideologies coming from everywhere. She wants to be professional, but then the cooperative teacher doesn't want that. That lady holds a culturalist ideology. And look at that conflict.
nice relationship with my students to care and to share. Not easy, but easily achievable. She's giving them everything they deserve, everything they need, probably everything they're asking for, meeting their needs and interests. There you go. She knows learning doesn't have a limit. And she wants to continue doing this. She's talking about empowerment. She is probably already empowered and now she wants to transfer this to her students. So what did we learn from this experience then? Yeah. We still have student teachers and teacher educators who are capable of inflicting damage to the culturalist ideology, introducing change in the right way. We can still solve problems. Okay, it's a classroom. But then remember, this is where everything, all the action starts from. Some people would tell you that that's the micro situation. Believe me, no, that, that's again a fallacy. This is where the entire action starts from. This is where people go on to become lawyers, engineers, doctors, you name it. It's the classroom. It's the big picture. It's not the small picture. If we can practice our theories, then we can theorize practices. This is also applicable here. Policies, yes, they need practitioners with a lot of awareness. And we had those four ELT stars and they're working on it now. Teacher training education, absolutely horribly influential. Can it introduce change? That's a 1 million real, Omani real. Okay, let's go dollars. 1 million dollar question. Yeah, how many teacher educators know enough about ideologies and critical reflective practice? I don't know. I don't research this, but experience tells me very few. Probably we need to educate ourselves. You never know. You may take a different stance the very near future once you start to understand these things and see what change they can bring along with them. Am I in time, uh, Wafa? Yes, you are, Dr. Ali. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Dr. Ali. I would like to invite our audience to please provide us with their queries and comments so we can direct them to our keynote speaker. Again, if you prefer to use the mic, use the mic just you can raise your uh, your hand. Then you can you will be able to have the mic to speak. Dr. Ali, getting back now to what I have seen saying, I've taken lots of notes and I feel like the the world started to be moving around. <laughs> Okay, so this is this is an eye opening session, I would say, and uh, it's obvious that what is going on now here is that uh, you touch upon critically so many terms that are commonly used in teaching and in, in teaching and learning English language, right? So, uh, for example, okay, student, uh, vice versa, teacher centered approach, okay, uh, curriculum design even assessment and on top of that suddenly when i was trying to understand what's going on with all of these why why dr ali has got a problem with all of this in the language classroom suddenly you talked as well about uh, teacher identity where you said that uh, teachers at least in oman maybe as as you pointed out uh, do not have really their identity right طيب, um, I, I, I need to know why do you think I really I'm really interested in that and I would love the audience to either to uh, to comment on what you are saying or maybe in what I am saying. 
why do we have Dr. Ali this very dark, uh, let's say, vision or very dark point of view about what's going on? I mean, let's think, for example, about the teachers, right? They are controlled by uh, certain curriculum, right? They are um, they are controlled by KPIs in the institution and by learning outcomes, which usually they don't even contribute to, right? They are contributing or they are part of a huge system and they are just playing a very small role in that system. At the end, very often, unfortunate teachers really don't have a say over what they are doing. So they just want their learners to be able to use the language successfully, right? So I need to know, please, who are you blaming on this, all of this? And why in the first place do you have all of this dark point of view about what's going on regarding ELT in the Gulf, in Oman, in whatever ELT is? Thank you. Thank you very much, Rafa. What an intriguing question. Yes, absolutely. Who am I blaming? Well, I said it probably when I was talking that I'm, I'm definitely blaming um, the elites, uh, the people in power, the people who are controlling everything. Look, our, our system of our, or for five decades or so has been very quantitative. We have always used numbers to control people's minds. Let me give you a great example. In Oman, we have always talked about the number of schools that in 19, before 1970, we had three, and now we have 1,100 plus. Am I proud of this? Not a bit. Okay, 1,100, 1,200, brilliant. What a great number. Oh, a lot of money was invested in this, but then, can we talk about quality? How much of that do we have? I, I doubt even 5 or 10%. Numbers, numbers, numbers. We are taking a quantitative approach here to get people to keep them away, really, from thinking qualitatively about things. From if, Even when you look at our research, I mean, I've, I've been at the College of Education now for six years. Um, if, if anybody's interested, uh, ladies and gentlemen, probably you can check my Google Scholar or Research Gate. There is a paper I published in 2015 about making a case for new research directions at SKU. Uh, please consult that and, and you will see something probably a little bit of what you never expected to see, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, it's very analytical, very critical, again, uh, exposes a lot of those things, really. So um, it's a shame, really. I mean, look, because we have been very culturally dependent far, on the West, in, in our plans, in our theories, even in our implementation, we are not seeing where we are, and we are not even giving an opportunity. We're not, let's put it this way, we're not trusting our own people to, to bring about informed change to, to our uh, realities here. And you would understand it. Sometimes probably we don't own our decisions and, and that's very frustrating. But then where there is a will, there is a way. Uh, at a very low level, you can always create change. You can always come up with something a little bit different here, if given the opportunity. But then, for somebody like Ali Al Isa to be actually fought by somebody like the Minister of Education, if you're unaware of this, and I'm proud to say it, uh, a tiny Omani local guy to be targeted by the Minister of Education, that's a big thing. Uh, I know now I'm probably an ELT star myself. <coughs> this is fascinating that the minister doesn't want to hear my name, doesn't want to attend my talks, doesn't want to collaborate with me. I'm, I'm really proud of this. It means what I'm saying is probably spot on, bullseye. It's, it's hitting the target every time. And she knows she's fully aware of what is happening. Everybody is. <coughs> the minister, the undersecretary, the director generals, even people above them. 
without mentioning names. Those who are familiar with the system, they know what I mean. Those who are familiar with my approach, you're one of them, Wafa, know who I mean precisely. And uh, unfortunately, we're trying to blindfold the teachers and the students, even the inspectors and the senior teachers. And they are all following that manipulative system. And things have not moved a step forward, I'm sorry to say. We keep changing names, we keep changing the curriculum, we keep writing new curriculum, we keep investing not millions, billions in reforming ELT. But that is not inspired by the realities we have. The solutions we have are all imported. On the top of which comes the University of Leeds initiative. Ten years, those people came, they ripped us off, I'm sorry to say, and goodness me, they they thought they trained or they claimed, let's put it this way, trained over a thousand teachers. What training did they give us? They took us 50 years back. A disastrous outcome. Go on, yeah, and um, all right, so thank you. I can I can tell you now about the feedback from the audience, a group of them. Um, I can realize from their very nice names that they are colleagues from Oman, and they say that they cannot agree less, and we were not expecting less than that from you, Dr. Ali, because we know your approach. Thank you so much. And I can tell you that from my end, you, all, you always like to, to throw stones in, uh, in water. So you can see how it waves and you can see the, the changes in this water. Um, Dr. David in UB, hello, Dr. David, who was who was one of our previous keynote speakers and he's from Austria, University of Graz. Thanks for attending this session, Dr. David. He is saying, thank you, Dr. Ali, for your stimulating, informative and uh, uh, stimulating, informative and proactively talk. Uh, full of interesting and important uh, insights. So, by the way, the status of ideology that you refer to is not unknown in Europe, in European countries either. So, Mr. Ali, now I would like to link that with, with, with your slides when you talked about uh, democracy in the classroom, democracy of... Uh, by now, we know how loose that definition is. And uh, we, by now, we have we started to realize that uh, uh, if democracy is not only available in the English classroom, we would have tolerated that. But there isn't any democracy on life. So other people, really, in English language teaching profession, are prioritizing other things rather than democracy to the extent that you have been talking about. This is one idea. The other thing is the following. Now, instead of terms like democracy, for example, please tell me if you agree or not. Some people started to uh, to have other terms into English language teaching in order to cause some changes. Uh, let's say to cause some new changes, I would say that are very unfamiliar or unique by, for example, implementing the word innovation. So if you would like to be an innovative person, it's all right to be disagreed with, to have ideas that nobody knew about earlier, that should be absolutely fine. And you are pointed as, as uh, somebody who is, um, an, uh, let's say, uh, an innovative person, rather than an activist, rather than a resistant person who is resisting a language system or policy in the country. Isn't that a true, Doctor? Yani, what do you think about this, like being um, in an innovative approach, for example? Please tell me. Yeah, thank you so much, Rafa. I mean, uh, your questions are amazing, lady. What did you have for breakfast? Okay. I went to <laughs> visit you, Mr. Ali. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, well, look, I mean, yes, I agree with you. If, if you want to go modest and humble, then go for innovation and creativity. But honestly, I... I, I keep using these. There is no doubt about that. I even use them with my, my student teachers, whom I would love to call my junior colleagues. And many of them are attending today, and I'm so proud that they're there really and listening. Yes, 
you cannot survive without these two uh, inside your ELT classroom. But then, if you want to push the boundaries further, then you've got really to bring in some of that powerful vocabulary. This is what critical applied linguistics is about. This is what what ideologies are about. This is what professionalism as a powerful ideology is about, honestly. I mean, talking about democracy, social justice, equality, um, they've got to be there and we've got to use them. It's high time. As I said earlier, uh, it's been 20 years since applied linguistics, ELT, TESOL, call it whatever you want to call it, uh, has taken its critical turn. So, nothing wrong with that. I don't see any harm with using that vocabulary directly. Uh, make things move, make people start to see things. Uh, look, awaken them. Uh, exactly 10 years ago, we had the Omani awakening. Uh, people like to call it the Arab awakening, but then it, in Oman, it was a little bit different. It was unique to our context. Uh, and I like to call it the Omani awakening. I even use this in, in all my uh, research papers. This is what happened. People all of a sudden woke up. They started to see things differently. More specifically, they started to see that we have always lacked democracy, equality, social justice, and we were absolutely overwhelmed by corruption and things as such. We were living a disaster. Huh. We are still. Things have been changed, but those people had a say. They had to rise. And now we want teachers to rise. I'm, I'm not calling for teachers to go inside the classroom and fight and, 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 and go for violence. No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong, guys. When I talk about an ELT myself, being an ELT activist or being an epistemic rebel, I'm talking about my research my words, my thoughts. Uh, this is how I resist all that. I, I put it down in writing and then I disseminate it. And thank you so much to AL, ALLT um, 2020 uh, for giving me this opportunity today, really, to send my voice to the world. Uh, it's high time people started to know, people started to hear. Uh, Student voice, teacher voice have been completely oppressed for decades now. And enough is enough. Enough damage has been caused. We need now to start uh, freeing ourselves, take it to the next level. Let the world know, probably even let the world share our concerns. And if there are any innovative, creative solutions, here I am using these two words, then why not share them with us? Thank you so much, Wafa. Literally. Right, I can see long questions, very long comments, and I would like to apologize to our audience, but if you prefer to have uh, to use the mic, please let me know, because that, that can save our time as well. We can move faster with your queries, but I think that I can at least take another two or three queries, and I will be very straightforward with these. So, Dr. Ali, tell me, correct or incorrect, do you think? What do you think? Sure. Now, Dr. Sofia, Dr. Sofian is saying, um, okay, reflecting on my teaching practices in Oman, I think that it is administration who is actually causing all of this area of becoming uh, an uncomfortable environment. And he said, these administrators know nothing about ELT. So how it comes that they are taking decisions on ELT programs? Yes, agree or disagree? Agree and disagree. I mean, look, I'm, I'm also... Uh oppressed by, by administrators, by, by the hierarchy, but then I'm, I'm exercising my freedom behind the closed doors of my classrooms. As I said, where there's a will, there is a way. In Arabic, we say, Let's wait for Friday to come, inshallah. <laughs> 
And uh, save, okay, I'll take save the question because he has been writing it several times. Saves is saying, uh, what about our role as teacher? What can be our role to change, to implement, to influence? What can be our role after all of this description saying that we really have constraints and limitations and we are powerless? So how can we change? What is our role, please? Well, I mean, I'm sure you saw the quotes, my friend, and this is what my four ELT stars did exactly. They started working beyond what is imposed upon them. They started establishing those special relationships with their students. They started, look, I'm, I'm not saying take the textbook and, and put it in the dumpster. No, that's a political document. You cannot do that. But you have always have the courage and the wisdom and the intellectualism to go around it, to manipulate the textbook. Beat it, don't allow it to beat you. It's that simple. Keep the aims, but then see how you can create something that would really give those students what they deserve. What they have, look, they wake up so early, they go to school, they go there because they simply want to succeed. They want to learn. Are we giving them this? They don't know. Experience and research clearly says a big fat no. All right, Victor Ali Al Isa, um, thank you so much for this insightful and very um, enjoyable session. Thank you so much for that. Uh, what you have been talking about is really appreciated. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And thank also, you so much, like Rafa. Um, and I really apologize to our audience in case any of your comments or questions have been missed. I'm really sorry, but we always have limitations on time during conferences, exactly the same limitations you have as an ELT professional person in your classroom, like what Dr. Ali has said. So I would like to remind uh, everyone, please, that uh, the rooms from number one, number one to number four are already on. Please uh, join these rooms, especially if you are a presenter, because uh, you will be assigned the panelist option straight away once you join your rooms. So thank you so much. See you in all the other rooms. I wish we wish you all a great and wonderful, helpful and useful day. And Dr. Ali, back to you. Thank you so much for everything. Shukran, Thank you Victor. so much, Rafa, for giving me this absolutely golden opportunity, honestly, to voice at least some of my work, share it with my, humbly share it with my uh, colleagues, and, and I really appreciate their presence. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can easily get in touch with me, the email, even the phone number, Rafa has it. Um, don't worry about that. Call me anytime. Call me for whatever. Just don't ask for money, for God's sake. Okay, we're, 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 we'll be implementing the VAT very soon. So we, we, our pockets are, have got holes already. So uh, I'll, I'll always be there to share whatever I have with you. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Afar. Shukran, Dr. Ali.